What is going on everybody? Jumbo Thick here, back with more Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, our fourth edition campaign, Rise of the Forsaken. I am, of course, joined by my usual cast and crew, the Unfortunate Fellowship. That is Mr. Jumbo Smooth, Doobie 209, and, of course, our special guest slash new character, Mr. Pierce Galactic. If you guys want to briefly introduce yourselves, guys, before we kick it off. Hello everyone, I'm Marius Wolf, um, or Jumbo Smooth playing the role of Marius Wolf. Pardon me. <laughs> I like it the other way around. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm a miner, uh, I, I have a pick, and I've got some mysterious orbs full of caustic uh, substance, perhaps, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in my possession. Excited to see what those do, we're being chased by a couple demon dogs. Oh yes. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to... Uh, uh, frequent listener, uh, Mad Wookie, Mad Wookie. And, Nick, <laughs> and, yes. and Nick and Nick Swinson, I believe. Is oh yes, Nick yes, Swinson? yes, yes. Uh, ah, I like you guys' comments. Just ah, keep keep it up. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't don't give him don't give uh, our GM any suggestions on how to kill Marius Wolf. It's too right? late. Too late. They already did it. <laughs> <laughs> Over to Doobie. <laughs> What's up, guys? Dewey two hundred nine. You know, playing Seamus McGreedy, the uh, the well armed uh, road sergeant, extremely fully well strapped, coming at you like a like a John Wick movie here. Oh God! And uh, <laughs> I'm just looking forward to some more more blasphemous and insults of, of the oh, blood no. god. Oh yeah! Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. Either. Well, we'll definitely see how that goes, Mister Galactics. What's up, guys? This is Pierce Galactic playing the part of Bragadine Beno. Um, just a, a lost Bretonian noble. Doesn't doesn't quite know what he's do doing. Has some new friends. Starting to starting to feel a little bit of that 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 fever they have, though. Maybe uh, maybe we can turn a knight out of him after all. <laughs> exactly. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you have joined the wrong crew for knighthood. <laughs> I mean, I've awesome, seen Seamus. Awesome. This is, <laughs> yeah, Seamus. Seamus is well known. <laughs> so, with our cast and crew introduced, let's just hop into it, guys. We had a lot of, uh, we had a bit of a viewer decision at the end of the last episode that will, of course, be making a appearance in one way or another soon. But before we do that, let's recap as to what has happened thus far. Our unfortunate fellowship has found themselves into the long-lost hold of Carrick Zorn, where they were given ambiguous direction to find something inside this hold. You stumbled upon a interesting dwarven character in a very strange garb. Um, does anybody remember his full name? Uh, Dr Drogar Zartu. Oh, yes. You're definitely getting yes. something for that. You'll get a benefit for that Woo. one. <laughs> yes. I'm glad. So, Mr. Drogor, you stumbled upon him in what apparently looked like a dungeon amidst corpses and many other things, and he was being held through some kind of rune-inscribed bars in his own private cell. God knows how long he'd been in there. Um, but th through his direction, you were looking for a way to bust him out. You stumbled, well, you didn't stumble, you were directed to a almost an armory of sorts where the three of you, uh, Mr. Bragadine as well, uh, retooled, got quite a few weapons, um, threw a very, very good roll, ended up with a Thunderer for Seamus, and of course some mm. very interesting glass orbs that Mr. Wolf has taken possession of. Um, Bragadine, you got a very fine dwarven shield and a sword, which is also pretty rare. <laughs> it's quite um, beautiful. It's covered in bronze. It is. They are. They are in all of the items are covered in bronze, with the exception of the Thunderer. Um, there are pieces of blackened steel, mostly lining it, but um, the the barrel itself is uh, almost like a brass kind of color. So it's got a, a kind of an interesting look to it. And there's some interesting carved designs along the side. It's definitely not your average weapon. And may or may not be sought after by anyone who sees it. So just 
food for thought, Seamus. You might want to keep it covered at some point if you ever make it out of this hold. Come and take it. <laughs> oh, the headsman speaks. So, you retooled, got quite a few bits and bobs, all kinds of stuff. Uh, Marius, I believe you also got some hand axes, if I remember correctly, some throwing axes. But Correct. right when you were about to snatch up the runic key to open up um, Drogor's cell, you were attacked by giant spiders. Um, that was horrible. Yes, Mr. Bragadine suffered greatly <laughs> at the hands of these spiders. He was drug off, in fact, to their nest where um, Sh- Seamus decided not to join uh, Marius <laughs> to go hunt for Mr. Bragadine. Um, Marius Wolf made his way through these spider tunnels all the way to their lair where he not only freed um, Bragadine but managed to avoid all of the spiders and including the giant spider that was present and though he did leave our very unfortunate possible Skaven ally to die um, amongst many other creatures that were just dying up there you did also through a very good role on Mr. <laughs> he did Bragg- try to help me. Yeah, he did. You did. You were helped. He was trying to help you exactly, but Bragadine, um, through a good role, finally uh, discovered a key, another runic key that was on the body of a dead dwarf, um, which saved you guys some time in the long run. As it turns out, Seamus was attacked by some Skaven in the hold. The first time you'd seen evidence of their kind in Carrick Zorn. And he, though he fended them off quite valiantly, um, even in his very exhausted state, the key that you were going to take was, of course, lost, as probably procured by the very rat creatures that he drove away. Um, upon your return, you gathered up, went to Drogor's um, incarceration place, Dungeon, whatever. Cell, it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying. (laughs) You get there. You decided to open the door. And I believe one of you, Mr. Braggating, made an oath with Zardoom to help him recover and or um, dispose of some kind of artifact that was taken and is being held in somewhere in the hold. That is what these chaos creatures, these cultists and everyone else are after. Possibly one of the reasons why Carrick Zorn fell in the first place. Um, upon I this, was moved you've... by Marius's wolves, his bravery, so I, I had to stand up to his level. I had to take the oath. Yep, well. <laughs> all we know is Mr. No, Bragadine is, is the only one. <laughs> That actually <laughs> took the oath. <laughs> the other, the other, you other two didn't technically take the oath with him. So Mr. Bragadine is the one being held responsible if anything were to, you know, I don't know if anything bad were to happen. <laughs> so, of course, nothing <laughs> is. Oh, no. But regardless, um, with the elevators all but being ruined after what you guys did to them before, um, Drogor showed you a hidden passage. A uh, long set of stairs took you guys about an hour to climb them after you took a rest of sorts. And upon exiting said stairs through a hidden wall, you ended up in a grand hall of sorts. And as this was taking place, you spotted enemies abound. Um, did I leave anything out? Can anybody remember anything I might have missed? Important. I believe that is all. Okay. With that, I believe Mr. Drogor um, was, I, I believe he spoke up to you that he did not wish to fight whatever was coming. And you saw several creatures coming in your direction. They are holding, well, they're not actually holding torches as they get closer into view. You see that there are three slavering hounds of a very, very gargantuan stature 
Um, I believe I described them last time. They're about five feet at the head, standing up straight, and they're about um, six to eight feet long. They are, of course, a blood deep red color. Their skin is almost lizard-like, almost reptilian. And they have these large brass collars around their neck that are glowing with what is obviously a rune of corn that has been etched into them. They are being held. There's three of them. Um, They are being held by two handlers, which happen to be the very demons you've run into before. These are um, blood letters. The red-skinned humanoid demons that stand about seven to eight feet tall. The ones that almost killed Mr. Bragadine in the tunnel. <laughs> One of them is holding a what appears to be a flaming sword. Um, very similar to the ones you fought before. And the other one is holding a whip that is, of course, burning as well. And they each have a hold of a set of chains leading to these uh, these hounds. And the hounds are slathering and sniffing at the floor. And they're definitely moving in your direction. And as this happened, Drogor immediately bolted in the opposite direction. So, what are we doing? Um, I believe I had already picked up um, Bragadine, and yes. we were running with him. That's yeah. right. Yes, because yeah. Mr. Bragadine has a torn muscle in his leg, <laughs> so yes. he is moving at half speed. So you grabbed a hold of Bragadine. Are you? Because I'm a smaller. Are man. you holding? Are you holding him like, uh, like Princess Fire the Bride? Be- Fireman. No, Fireman. Okay. Fireman. <laughs> okay. Probably over the shoulder. So Bragadine, you've got over a good shoulder. view of this happening. Um, Seamus, so I'm right assuming. You're running with him? Yes. Okay, good. So it's at this point that we are going to enter a skill challenge, boys, to see oh. how this rolls. Oh, boy. Um, I need you guys to roll me initiative. Ooh. Oh, okay. okay. Initiative. Just to see what order you guys are going to go in. I rolled a 10. Okay. Uh, Mary says 13. 13. Okay. Bragadine. Bragadine has 7. Okay. So Marius, Seamus, Bragadine. That's the order we'll go in. So um, Drogor is going as fast as he can, and he's put on surprising speed. Um, you, you would think that a dwarf... Um, especially with their small legs, wouldn't be able to move as quickly as he is. And it's it's kind of, you, you would all at least kind of know, well, maybe you're not bragging since he's not looking. <laughs> he's facing the opposite direction. But Seamus and Marius would, would notice that he's moving rather quickly. He's at least keeping up pace. And he's almost pulling ahead of you guys. And his kind of feather cloak billowing behind him. And it looks like he's looking for something um, as he's running. And you are approaching a wall of sorts. And it looks like there is a tunnel built into the wall. This looks like it goes deeper into the mountain. Um, I'm assuming we're, we're still just following him. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. I'm right. along for the ride. Yeah. Bragadine doesn't have much of a choice right now. <laughs> but you, you make it to the edge of the tunnel. And... Um, Drogor kind of looks back at the three of you and then looks farther back and his eyes are a little bit wide as you glance over your shoulders and I need all of you guys to make me athletics test except for Bragadine. Um, okay. Man, Bragadine? I guess Bragadine, you wouldn't be considered in this since you're not walking. So I just need Seamus and Marius to give me tests. Oof. Alright. I am at a minus 10. You are at a minus 10 still. I rolled a 30 out of 27. Okay, you can, if you spend one fortune, you can make it a success. Uh, Yes, we will do that. Okay. I don't want to fall behind. Marius Wolf. Marius rolled an 80, but he's going to re-roll. Okay. (laughs) Ooh, 
Ooh, uh, 25 out of 26. Ooh, man, barely made it. Okay, so you, you both have a success. Razor's edge. Yeah, that's right on the edge. So you both are keeping pace with Zardoom, and you both kind of glance over your shoulder, and Bragadine can see this in full view. Those hounds are straining at the leash, almost dragging the... Uh, demon creatures behind them which are trying to keep up with them as they've definitely after seeing you guys run are giving chase and they're about 200 feet or so behind you but they are closing quickly so what actions would you guys like to take we'll start with um marius since you are at the top of the initiate order what would you like to do to attempt to flee from these creatures um, you, you mentioned we were in a tunnel right now. Currently, you were made it into a tunnel. It's, um, of course, this is a dwarf and Carrick tunnel, so it is about it's large, twenty feet wide, and about twenty or thirty feet tall. Mm, okay. Um, anything in the environment around? Uh, I will say there are. Looks interesting. As you're you're moving you're moving quickly in here and. Um, what would you be looking for? Let's put it like that. Um, I don't know. If there's something small that I can, like, I don't know, just anything, like an offshoot, like a smaller room, okay, perhaps. Okay. All right, go ahead and uh, give me a perception test. Okay. Uh, that's 37 out of 46. Oh man, just barely another success. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So glancing about, um, Drogor's next to you at this point, and he's kind of doing the same. And you can see that there are several offshoots up ahead. There is a. It almost comes to a um, not a, not a T, but there are two offshoots, one to the left and one to the right. Um. And then, of course, the tunnel keeps going straight as well for some distance. So you do see those up ahead coming up quickly. You have okay. a free action if you want to shout anything out to anybody. Yeah, I might um, shout out to Drogor. Master Zardum, what's the plan? And um, we will get to him on his turn. <laughs> so... <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. So, um, Seamus, I believe you are next. Yeah. What would you like to do? Um, I would use my free action to kind of shout out to Marius. Uh, maybe need to drop one of those balls, Marius. I'll take a shot at it. And I'll just keep on keeping up with them, you know? I don't want to fall behind. Okay. All right. Um, why... Don't let, let's let's try to make this a test of sorts. So how about you give me a charm test, Seamus, since you're trying to get him to do something or leadership? I'll let you choose. Oh, all right, charm or leadership. Um, so is this a minus ten as well? Uh, yeah, all your tests are at minus ten right now, unfortunately. All right, <laughs> I will do I will do leadership because it's three points higher. Okay, I got a. I rolled an 18 out of 46. Okay. All right. Pretty good. So you, that's, that may sound like a decent idea to you, um, Marius. And just keep that okay. in mind. Of course, free All to right. do what you okay. want, but I'm, I'm basically tallying this against your, the threshold you guys need to reach to, um, survive. <laughs> so, okay. okay. Um, Bragadine, that leads, that is, it is now your turn. Um, what would you like to do to benefit the group? As as then I'm over uh, Marius Wolf's shoulder, I'm going to basically shout in his ear, Marius, do you have any more of those fire bombs? The ones you took the spiders out with? They're right behind us, man. You've got to do something. That's it. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Okay. Um, ah, man, what kind of test would that be? Uh... How about you? You, I'll, I'll give you the same one that Seamus said. Either charm or leadership. You pick. Let's do charm. Okay. First roll tonight, at least for me. Oh, let me see. That's uh, eighteen. I love my new hundred-sided die. 
That's 18 <laughs> out of 60. Okay, oh, wow, wow. They, man, you are a charming individual. There we go. So we you, go. you we go. definitely, Marius, at this point, you would feel definitely inclined to possibly um, go with the whole we're throwing a firebomb plan. Um, either that okay. or possibly the one Seamus suggested. So basically it sounds like you, upon your next turn, you'd be heavily inclined to mm-hmm. do one or the other. But, of course, okay. it is your decision. So, at this point, yeah. that Zardoom, it's his turn now. And he glances at the two of you. Ah! Well, um... Ah, look, look! look ah. And then he glances over to the left and sees what he, his eyes light up. And he's like, there! There! To the left! And he's making a movement, like, as soon as you guys reach the intersection, that he wants you guys to take a left. So that is going to be his turn as you guys are still running and moving as quickly as you can. Um, there happens to be a plethora of some, looks like, charred remains that are scattered about this tunnel, oh. as well as um, <laughs> various other um, signs of battle and things of the sorts. There's big holes inside some of, the, uh, some of the walls and things leading into, looks like, open passageways. You're not sure what's in there. But you're moving at such a quick pace that you, you kind of take this in sparingly. Um, you also do see large amounts of cobwebs um, along the walls and on, uh, across the ceilings. As this room is very much lit with those kind of dwarven runes down the, uh, down the hallway spread out every like 20 to 30 feet or so. The kind of blue light is what's lighting everything up. It's, I shouldn't say lighting up, it's dim. It's enough for you to see kind of outlines. But the fast approaching, glowing, um, demonic energy behind you is definitely lighting up the, uh, the hallways behind you guys. And you can start hearing the hounds getting closer and closer. So with your guys' success levels, you make it successfully to the intersection. And it is now Marius Wolf's turn. Okay. So we're we're turning into the. Um, the you're place going to point if out. if you're listening to Drogor, he wants you guys to take a left. Is he leading the way? He is right next to you. Okay, if he's leading the way, then I, I'd probably do this. Do as he asks. Okay, so you um, you start you head a left as you get to the intersection. Mm-hmm. You glance right and you glance left to the right. It looks like the hallway stretches for another 100 to 200 feet and then hits another T intersection. Straight ahead, you're not sure where it goes. You glance left, and it looks like it goes about 50 feet, and then it looks like it stops. There's nothing there. It's just a wall. Okay. Are you making Uh, a left? I'm going to trust that possibly there's some type of secret entrance, but... Who knows? Maybe we're just going <laughs> to die in this dead end. So I do kind of raise my... Marius kind of raises his eyebrow. and mm-hmm. Very well, Master Dwarf. And uh, starts to run. But right when he gets to, I guess, where the kind of new archway for this tunnel goes. Yes. Uh, he's going to reach into his pack and just briefly lay down one of those... Um, orbs. Oh, you're going to lay it down, huh? Let's see how well yep. you lay it down. Oh, oh, go well. ahead. Real good. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> Don't drop me. <laughs> Give me that <laughs> dexterity check to see if this doesn't right. shatter and blow up. Uh-huh. All right, all right. All right. My dex isn't too bad. Let's see. I'm going to re-roll. Okay. <laughs> oh no. I'm right above it too. Mm. Ah, yeah, thirteen out of thirty-seven. Okay, that's it's it's pretty good. So you reach okay. down and you had these secured separately, um, the, the four orbs, yeah. and it takes you a a second. You kind of have to pause for a moment, but you manage to reach down in into the side of your pack and. Just because you're Marius Wolf and you're strong as hell, with one hand, not dropping Bragadine, managed to pull mm. free one of these like 20 pound glass orbs and <laughs> roll it down behind you as you crest the corner and begin moving. 
Um, yeah. So at um, this point, uh, yeah. Do you have anything else you need to do? Just for free action as yes. I continue to run and stuff. Um, I'd probably just shout to my comrades. Um, uh, sorry, the supernova. I am unfortunately out to the fire bombs. This is all I have. Seamus, we're going with your plan. And uh, just keep on running. Okay. After I set it down. All right. Seamus, it is now your turn. You are, you've right. made it to the intersection. And per Marius Wolf's exact wording, he slightly rolled the ball behind you. It's not very far. <laughs> what would you like to do, Seamus? So we're at an intersection. Is there like a, a corner? Because I think we were turning there is There left. is a corner, yes. All right. Um, so as we turn left, I'll kind of like post up around this corner for protection. Okay. And I will... <laughs> okay. Remove the crossbow from the shoulder. Okay. And how, how far away am I from this ball? Okay, it's not very far. It's going to be oh, probably geez. 15, 20 feet from you. Well, my well, my, intent, it, my intent was us to run as far as we can, and once they get to the ball, then shoot it, you know? You, you, so, you're, you're welcome. If you want to sit there and wait, Seamus, you can. That's that's the problem, well, I have to sit there no, and wait. I, <laughs> no, that's not... Uh, I don't know if I explained it properly. What my intent was was... The new archway for this tunnel. Yes. You said it went down another another 50 feet, correct? Yes. My intent was to lay it like, lay, leave it right in the doorway of this tunnel. Okay, in, in this per, tunnel. Per, yes, and then proceed okay. down 50 feet. Okay. Uh, you know, as far as we can. Okay. Then. Before he can shoot it, basically. All right, all right. That's, that, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, I must have okay. misunderstood that. Yeah, that's okay. fine. Yeah. So in that case... Yeah. Um, you can you can keep running and keep an eye on it, and whenever you, I'm assuming you maybe hold your action till you see them turn the corner, maybe. Yeah, because yeah, because I'll, I'll have to stay you know, at sixty feet from it. So okay, that's that's what I would do. All right, so fifty feet, and then uh, yes, so you you have you guys haven't quite made it to the wall yet. It is Mister Braggadine's turn. Would you like to do anything? <clears throat> Braggadine. Braggadine forgot to unmute. Sorry about that. That's fine. There we go. Marius, that's uh that's much bigger than the the fireball you threw at the spiders. I I think we re we we need to move further away. I'm 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 quite frightened right now. I and, and they're right behind us. <sighs> And they are right behind you. <laughs> but are, we still, are we still moving? You guys are still moving as fast as you can, yes. I'm a, I'm, carry me like a baby. We're cool. Okay. All right. Um, do you want to ready any kind of actions or anything of the sort? I would definitely like to ready my shield to move up in front of my face in case there's okay. a giant explosion behind us. That <laughs> is a good thing to say, indeed. I, I agree. Specifically, so. there we go. I've got my shield up, maybe peeking over the top. Yes. Um, my <laughs> eyes are as big as saucers because, man, there are some scary demons chasing us. So you guys make it at this point. You make it to the end of the tunnel. It's, it's a flat wall. You guys are just, you're in a dead end. And Zardoom is, is very nervously kind of picking at the wall itself. He's like, oh, it should, it should be, oh, it should be here. It should be here. And he's looking for something, but not finding it. Marius Wolf, it is your turn. You can hear oh. the hounds and the demons quickly approaching. What would you like to do? Um... Try to help him find something okay. in the wall. <laughs> Go ahead and make me an intuition test. Oh, all right. Oh, nice. Uh, five out of 34. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, two yeah. levels of success. Good. So you're helping um, Drogor, and you're, you're glancing at these flat stone wall. <laughs> you you hear the, the calls of the demons behind you. 
and you pick out um, one of the bricks, or not necessarily bricks, one of the rocks that make up this wall is just a little bit out of place, which is highly unusual from Dwarven architecture. And you you just barely pick it out. And you go to place your hands upon it. And the rock shifts inward. And much like the tunnel you came through. a Or the door you came through to make it to this level. The entire surface of the wall shifts in about two feet. And looks like it opens up another passageway that you can step into. Drogor immediately us. pulls himself into okay, the ahead. gap and starts and starts and motions for you guys to follow. Is this dwarf um, dwarf tall? It is dwarf tall. Okay. So you might have to <laughs> oh, slouch down. Yeah, it is. It's a tight squeeze. Okay. I just I just didn't want to see if they could get in or not. You know what I'm saying? Oh so yeah, probably yeah, probably get, not. I'm probably gonna get like sneak in and get kind of behind the. The, the door frame, you know, the wall. Okay. And kind of... Oh, watch be... my head! <sighs> so Sorry, sir. And uh, uh, look... Uh, uh, kind of look around the corner to see if they're going to be around the corner and what Seamus is going to do, you know? Okay. Uh, All right. So you managed to do that. Um, Seamus, it is now your turn. The wall just... You can hear it moving behind you. Um, you've made it to there. You, ha- you glance over your shoulder and you see that Marius... And Drogor have disappeared inside, along with Bragadine, since he's attached to Marius. And you glance back at the orb. You can hear the demons coming. They haven't quite made it to the entrance of this tunnel yet. What would you like to do? All right. Uh, I like to uh, back myself like up to this doorway. Okay. Yeah. Have the uh, the crossbow is readied. Okay. And um, as soon as they get to that ball and take a shot with it. All right. So that's your ready to action. Um, it's at this point, we'll go to Braggadine's turn before we get to the interesting bits. Would you like to do anything, Braggadine? Are we still moving or are we actually kind of you, it, inside the it door? It looks, um, Marius stopped moving. He stopped moving to put his back up against the, the door frame and he's glancing to see what's going on with Seamus. So I'm you're gonna, not moving currently. I slap him on the shoulder. Set me down. Set me down. Let me prepare myself. I, if you let me do, do it. Yeah, I'll that's it. fair. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then I will ready my shield and my sword and behind Marius. Okay. All right. Ready myself just just in case we're we're gonna fight. Okay. Plus, are you, I, I, are I you pressing yourself against the wall? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just need to make sure. Need to clarify about oh, what's I'm, gonna I'm, happen. I'm. I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> <laughs> trying to be as small as possible, yet be okay. brave as possible. You press yourself against the wall, and Drogor's like, What's taking so long? And it's at that moment that, Seamus, you see the first muzzle of a hound peek around the corner. Um, do you wait for them to pass the ball, or are you going to take the shot now? Uh, I'm going to take it now. Okay. Go ahead, and this is a Ooh. tiny, tiny target for you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's at a minus 20. But you used to bullseye right. Womp Rats in your T16, so you can get this. But also, you're at a minus 10, <laughs> so it's a minus 30 total to this shot, Seamus. Oh, All right. shit. All right, this is... Oh, this is going to be interesting. So I rolled a 14. Okay. And a minus 30 is a 26. Oh man, you got lucky on that. <laughs> okay, so that's definitely it's a it's one level success even. Okay. So here's what happens, Seamus. You oh, level shoot. the crossbow bolt. Are you standing straight up or are you like in a crouch? I am probably in a crouch cuz I, I imagine with my height I'm going to have yeah. to, you know, crouch down to get through yeah, this door exactly. so. So you you're I'm crouched like down, knee. you know, crossbow <laughs> at the shoulder, waiting and as soon as that muzzle peeks around the corner, you release the bolt and it aim is very true you see it pierce into the glass orb fully into it you hear the glass and at first there's nothing and both of the hounds 
while all three of the hounds pull around the corner and the demons with them, slathering and this time screaming wildly. And as soon as they see you, the flames burn just a little bit brighter for some reason. Don't know why. <laughs> but regardless, <laughs> um, they make it a few steps past. And at this point, you hear a click as some more glass cracks just a little bit more. And then you hear this sucking sound. And the demons look, the blood letters look a little uh, taken aback. And they glance back down behind them and trying to keep the hound steady. And as they do, suddenly just a massive explosion goes off. Ooh. Just a boom! Yeah. The tunnel rocks. And as it does, Seamus, you're the only one who can really see the devastation. I guess Marius is, if you're peeking around the corner a little bit, you feel intense heat billow down towards you. Which, uh... Yes. Uh... Since I'm kind of like my back to the doorway, yes. Would you allow me to like reach out and grab Seamus and pull him in? Go ahead and give me a um, <laughs> uh, give me a a weapon attack, just weapon skill with just your hand, basically to come and grab him. Okay, that's a twenty-six out of. 53. Okay, yeah, I will say you 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 managed to grab a hold of him and this is because there was there was time before the ball exploded after you saw his shot rain out. So you grab a hold of kind of like his cloak, his sea dragon cloak. Are you going to try to pull him in? Yeah, I'm just trying to pull him in the safety okay. to get out of the Seamus, yeah. are you allowing this to happen? Uh yeah, I'm probably like mesmerized with this explosion and I probably okay. sat, like, you know, well, since he pulls you, you don't see the full explosion. You just feel heat. Oh. And all you see is a... All, as you are pulled back into the open tunnel, you see the... Um, a... Um, oh, oh, damn it, man. We just lost uh, Bragadine. So we need to invite him back. <laughs> so, if somebody wants to invite just, him back real quick. Everything. Okay. Oh, no. So, I'm not going to go over Lame. I'm so lame. It's fine. <laughs> but we will pick up right where I was. <laughs> so, <laughs> with our technical the technical difficulty dealt with, um, Seamus, you don't see the full explosion. All you feel is blistering heat, and you will not have to make your endurance check now, as Marius has saved you from it. However, you do see the hall lights up with a massive green light. Um, and it's blinding. Um, Marius, since you were glancing around the corner, and Seamus, you both have a blinded condition. Ooh. Ah. From the intense, hot light that spills forth. And the light even spreads around into the tunnel, the new entrance that you guys are in. And you feel heat quickly approaching. And it's at this moment that Drogor um, moves towards the entrance and pulls Seamus and Marius both. In your blinded state, you really don't have a opposed role to this. He pulls both of you by the scruff into the tunnel and smacks something nearby. And you see the wall shift back inward just in time for it to... Boom and rock and almost come off of its hidden hinges as a massive detonation went off on the other side of this door. <laughs> so that just happened. Awesome. Yes. 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 <laughs> um, suffice Damn to say, is. you're you're pretty sure that uh, those pursuing you are no longer. <laughs> So with that, you have successfully dodged the hunting pack. Whew. You take stock of what's going on, and you are free to do as you will. How long does it take for our blindness to go away? It only takes it only takes a round for it to kind of okay. slough off. So you're quickly you're you're back to normal. You can see again. Okay. 
I guess uh, just Marius would probably be laughing. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, that was that was quite the show. Good <laughs> shot, good shot, Seamus. That was a good uh, idea, gentlemen. Good idea. Uh, maybe it looks like you got some explosive balls there. Ah, oh, that I do. That I do. <laughs> you should. You should visit the Gilded Canary. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, you uh, with the balls. I do have explosive balls, at least when I'm there. Oh, uh, uh, I get it. Ah, uh, yes. Wow. Uh, quite... <laughs> if I could give you the inspiration, I would. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> you are welcome. Uh, you are welcome. Uh, 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 the Drogor, uh, do, you, do you know what these orbs are? And Drogor just kind of glances back. Mm. Huh. You found those, did you? I'd be careful with them. I believe we'd... Uh, yes, assuredly. Something that was worked out at the end of the last war. The War of Vengeance. They'll come in useful. And that's all he says. Come quickly. We have much ground to cover. Very well. Lead on, Master Dwarf. And I... I help uh, bragging kinda over the shoulder. I'm assuming, kind of yeah. helping him walk as yeah. best he can. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you, Mister Wolf. <sighs> All right, Seamus, are you taking up the rear? All right, yeah, I'll probably uh, just like load another bolt into my in my okay. thing as we start walking again. All right, good. You reload the crossbow. Are you running low on bolts yet? I have nine left. Okay. All right. How would you keep that in mind? <laughs> so you keep moving forward at this point, following Drogor. And these tunnels are tight. So, Seamus, you're going to be hunched over quite a bit, you being the tallest, you know, over six feet tall. Mm -hmm. um, the tunnels are about five and a half feet tall. So even Marius is going to be ducking a little bit. And, um, but no, you should be fine, actually, if I remember correctly. Oh, it's quite pleasant in here. Yeah, you're, you're fine. Close. You're just there. So it's still, it's still, it's close. Plenty of room. It's still close. But, um, Drogor is, of course, fine. He's only about like, uh, five foot or so. So you're coming in. These tunnels are tight. They're a couple feet wide, like three, four feet wide. So, um, you're doing your best to keep, uh, bracketing, uh, moving, uh, Marius as best you can. And you're hunched down going through these tunnels and there, it comes to several intersections. And at the first one, you make a right with Drogor. Then the second intersection, you keep going straight. Then the third intersection, you make another right. And you are just seeing blackness, all of you, except for Marius, who can see in the dark, who can see a dim glow um, coming off of uh, Drogor himself, which is kind of weird. But he's somewhat illuminating the uh, the rest of the path for you. But Seamus and Braggadin, you are almost completely blind, um, with the exception of you're just being able to follow the men ahead of you. Very, 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 very dim light. As it was. And you come to a, another section of tunnel. And Drogor stops halfway through. And I'm assuming the rest of you stop behind him. Mm -hmm. And as this I, happens... Yeah, go ahead, Marius. I was saying I as an A-Y-E. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, he stops you up. And um, he brings his fingers to his lips for Marius more so than the rest of you. And I'm assuming Marius, you probably whisper back to them to 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 yeah. keep quiet. And quiet lads. I have acute sense hearing. You do have acute sense. So of would hearing. I also be able to hear? You normally would, except for it doesn't appear that. It's a sound that has put him on alert. Okay. Um, Marius, since you've been able to see as well, you can see that his hand has been touching the side of the tunnel this entire time. And you've seen this mm -hmm. trick in the mines before with other others of his kind. 
And due to their acute sense of touch, they can feel vibrations through the stone and track people and or enemy patrols. And it appears that Drogor has been noted to find something close by that has concerned him. But he kind of hushes the, the lot of you. And then he moves over to a... Uh, what just looks like just an, another piece of the tunnel, Marius. And he presses his hand in, in a very distinct pattern into several different stones. And then the tunnel once again shifts out of place and then to the side, revealing an opening into a much larger area. He peeks his head out and then back in and then glances at the three of you. All right, meddlings. Now is the time to keep your oath. Of course, good sir. I am ready for it. There are... Is he like... Continue. What were you going to ask? I was going to say, is he like readying up for battle or... He is... It doesn't look like... It doesn't look like he's... uh, That's hard to say doesn't look like he's okay. readying for battle, but it looks like he's about to tell you something, obviously. Okay. Um, okay. So he basically says, we're, we're looking for a specific room of sorts. I don't know how to say it in your tongue. It is a vault holding this desecrated object. I need it brought to me to be destroyed. To banish these heathens from my hold. We will take several paths, known only to the Dawi, to circumvent the patrols. There are many on this floor. I need you to stay quiet, stay behind me, and be ready. Mayus would just kind of nod. All right. Yes, Master Dwarf. And as you nod, he will pass into the opening. I'm assuming the rest of you are following. Yes. Oh. Okay. Yep. Everyone make me stealth checks. <laughs> oh, okay. This should uh, be fun. Uh-oh. So- oh. Oh. Yes, Mary. How am I supposed how am I supposed to add my stealth again since I'm got several Special okay. stealth things for underground. So you have stealth underground, correct? Mm-hmm. So just add the modifier the to your to your regular stealth check. Oh, the modifier. Okay, I see. Yeah, yeah, so, just the modifier. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, Mary's rolled a 13 out of uh, 29. God, that's it with the modifier. <laughs> yes, that, that is. <laughs> it is. Okay. All right, 13 out of 20. It's still of a, a, a pass. How about Seamus? Seamus got an 18 with his minus 10. It'll be an 18 out of 17. Ooh, you want to use a fortune point to make it a success? <sighs> I, I, yeah, because Mary has passed. Got it. How about Mr. Braggadine? Let's see how he did. Braggadine. You did himself. You did. I'm sure. <laughs> also, GM, you know, I do have Tunnel Rat. You do. So, you know. All right. You do. You do. No one else does. Yeah. <laughs> you no else you have, do, bro. Though. I don't. I don't live my life underground, bro. <laughs> Braggadine. While he's sorting that out, yes. <laughs> um, the two of you, at least, well, actually, all of you, believe you've slipped stealthily behind Drogor. And you begin moving down the hallway. 
the he makes a few twists and turns and you're moved for about uh, 10 20 minutes or so before you make it to a T intersection you are looking down the T so like the flat of the T is ahead of you and at the end of this tunnel and these are the very large more dwarven tunnels the ones that are about 20 feet 20 by 30 um, and it looks like this part of the hold is not as um, not as desecrated as the rest of the hold is. It looks like it's more preserved of a sorts, almost like there wasn't as much fighting near here. So, basically, what you see ahead of you, do we have Braggadine? Braggadine is here. Braggadine is back. Got it. Okay. So you just made it to a T intersection, Braggadine. Um, you see before you guys that the there's something going on. There is a group of individuals. You have passed several parties that Drogor has successfully, with your good stealth checks, has successfully navigated you around without having much trouble. You do see that there are Chaos Cultists, Beastmen, even the odd armored figure in blackened plate walking around. Um, champions uh, of the Dark Gods walking around with uh, these people. That you see passing by in, in smaller groups of about six to seven. Sometimes you might come acro across a group of ten individuals. But through Drogor leading you, you manage to circumvent most of these. But you come to this T intersection and there's a interesting group ahead of you as at the end of the T you see a massive door of a kind set into the wall and you've passed several doors though they were more normal size this one is at least 30 feet tall and it's ornate in nature there is a depiction of various dwarves that have been carved into the frame of the door itself and across the span because this is a double set of doors that either opens in or out you're not sure which um, there is a even from this distance you're about 100 feet away you can tell that the carving is a very almost glum dwarf with a hood draped across down low um, almost to its nose its beard spilling out um, decorated in different metals and jewels and there's a massive rune that is kind of embossed behind him into the stonework itself. And it is glowing blue. A bright blue. As, down at the foot of this door, you see a interesting sight. There is a party of some kind of chaos worshippers at the base of this door. The most obvious thing of sorts are the two giant hulking creatures that look like um, they're about 10 feet tall. And they're wearing tattered rags. And it looks like there's lashes and giant hunks of flesh missing from them. And they definitely look like ogres of sorts. Though not healthy ogres. They look beaten and submissive. And they are currently taking a pile of bodies and grabbing a hold of the corpses and tossing them into the top of some giant thing. It is about eight feet tall. It's quadrupedal. Looks like there are four legs on this thing. It looks to be entirely made out of metal, all of it. There are four trunk-like legs, and the body is kind of a, a moving, shifting, almost liquid metal form about it. And there is a bright, fiery magma glow coming from inside. The top of this thing is open wide, almost like a gaping maw with serrated teeth. And the ogres are chucking the corpses up above it. 
and they're falling into the furnace of sorts as it is the teeth shift and move almost as if it is eating the flesh. And there's this horrible noise it's making. All the while, towards the front of the thing, the creature, whatever it is, some kind of machine creature, some kind of demon engine, there's a head at the top that you can only imagine, do from your angle, you can't see it exactly, as an open wound on the top of this, uh, what should be a mouth. And there is a skull-like head with bull horns attached to the side. And liquid hot magma metallic metal is spewing forth from the mouth into the door, boring into the stone itself. The runes are flashing brighter and brighter the more this happens. All the while, there are three forms of some very stunted, short, bulky figures that you guys would recognize as dwarves. Um, though Marius, you being able to see the best, even though all of you can see this easily with the amount of light coming off of these creatures, you see that these dwarves aren't wearing much in the way of armor. In fact, they're wearing leather straps and aprons. And uh, they are all clean-shaven. Their heads are clean-shaven. And the one closest to you is holding this barbed whip in its hands. And it glances back over its shoulder. And as it does, you see that its beard is black and almost cinder-like in nature. And it is long and braided. But there are two tusk-like like tusks coming out of its lips and curling up almost to its nose. It is definitely some kind of mutant dwarf. And it lashes one of the, um, the slave ogres with its whip and gets it moving quicker, tossing more bodies in. What would you guys like to do? <laughs> Can Bragadine see see the face like these tusks, or is it more like I'm thinking almost like a smelter where it's there's a lot of orange and red oh yes, silhouette tons of it, yes, stuff. extremely. So okay. it, it would be vague images except for Marius. Marius has very good eyes underground, so the rest of you would just kind of see shapes. More so, the more detailed descriptions would be for Marius. Bragadine yeah, gets right up against doing. Marius and peeks around his shoulder. Perhaps a little, a little quiver. Perhaps. <laughs> and and Drogor, Drogor glances back at you. Ah, Dawizar. They found the vault. We must hurry. And he, actually, yep, he does. He makes the he makes the test. He glances over to his left, and there's a small doorway. He motions for you to quickly move in besides him. And he pushes his way into this door. It's a almost like a side tunnel. Um, are you guys approaching with him? Uh, uh, yes. I need yes, all of you to I'm make me following. stealth checks one more time. No! Oh, Jesus. Ooh. Oh, God. I rolled a 16 out of 29. Good, good. How about oh. Seamus? Oh. Uh, I got a 17 out of 17. Ooh, nice. Oh. Raggeding. All right, I'm going to I'm going to burn a fortune point. Okay. To uh I wanted to see how they rolled cuz uh, we Raggeding did not roll well. So, we're going to burn a fortune point and Oh, hell yeah. Uh, that's a three out Ooh. of 33. Okay, good. Very, three level. Man, Bragadine's even even hurt. He's he's He shifts quickly. And you guys all do it relatively unseen, or at least you believe you are unseen. Um, as stealth checks are opposed, by the way. Regardless. Uh, no. Regardless. You guys also, shift in. Rat. You have tunnel rat. <laughs> Seamus and Bragadine do not. <laughs> so yeah. you, you shift in behind Rogue War and he's like, hurry, quick. And he, he moves 
straight ahead and then he makes a right. Almost like he's circumventing the party ahead of you. And he pops out his head and, and looks and sees. And then, quick, this way, this way. And he ducks off into the tunnel to the left. And this is the larger dwarven tunnel that you're back inside. Looks like he circumvented the T. Are you still following? Yes. Yes. Okay. Don't leave he, me, gentlemen. You circumvent it, and then you make a corner. And as soon as you make the corner, he, he stops and glances back to see if they saw you. And his eyes kind of light up. He's like, oh, oh no. Hurry, hurry. And he moves to a piece of the wall that would be what you, if you could guess, would be connected to the room that the dwarves are trying to get into. The Dawizar, that is. And this piece of wall has a few distinct characteristics. As there is a large rune engraved into the wall itself. Um, it's about um, like the size of a dinner plate. And it's about um, head level for a dwarf. And underneath it, there are what appears to be two handprints. One of them is definitely a dwarven hand. And what's more interesting is this, the other one, which is to the right of it apparently is a human hand as it is much larger and more thin fingers. The There's an inscription in Kazalid, which none of you can read, unfortunately. And the one on the left has what looks like the, the dwarven hand, has what looks like a red stain across it, long dried. What would you like to do? Is he putting his hand in there? He is not. He's just glancing. He's like, hurry, hurry. We must we must open the vault. You must slip inside. <laughs> I guess we're following him, I guess. Unless okay, he, he's back. led you to this point. Okay. Like you, and then that's it's up to you guys. How are you gonna get in? How do I open the vault? How can how can we do this? Let's get inside. Tell me what to do. And he glances at you, Bragadine. Just, just open the vault. I, you. Uh, I took my sword into my belt and I put my hand on the thing. You put your hand on it. Yeah. Okay. You place your hand against the stone. It's cool to the touch. Nothing happens. The oath must be fulfilled. On Only a true Dawangar, dwarf friend, can open the way. Uh, Marius will put his hand on there. Excuse me, sir. And I'll uh, put my hand there. Nothing happens. You place your hand against the stone. Hurry! Hurry! And as you, as he's saying that, you're seeing, you're hearing, you especially, Bragadine, with your, sight and, your heightened sense of uh, sound. They're coming closer. Your shuffling feet. Something might be coming to investigate. What are we Nothing. supposed to do, Master Dwarf? The blood! Is it? Okay. I take and my hand, I run it across the blade of my sword, and I put it on the... Braggading right does. Braggading does. This is, right. this is important. Braggading fulfills his oath to the dwarf. Braggading? Like a Bretonian knight, I will, be, I will fulfill this. Okay. Slash Braggading cuts his hand. Right I'm going to say you take one wound, Braggading. Okay. And you place it against the stone as the blood touches the stone the rune lights and then shifts inward and there's a small opening big enough for one person to get through at a time and that's where we're going to take our break